Hi, today we're going to be looking at the collections lab and um, let's uh, get started. Okay, so let's have a look here on the first page. Assume you're um, an event coordinator for a community charity event and are keeping a list of who has registered. Create a variable uh, registration list that will hold strings. It should be empty after initialization. So it's asking us to create a, a variable array called registration list. Well, how do we do that? Well, we start with the keyword var, just like if we're creating one variable and we give it a name, registration list in this, uh, in this um, particular example, registration list, right? Exactly just like we're creating one variable, except when we create an array, we put a colon here. And uh, well, in this case, we have to specify that it's of type string, which is what they want us to do. And uh, we kind of do the two hard um, uh, square braces, that's what they're called, to create an array. So now we've created an array of strings um, and the array is called registration um, uh, uh, list. Okay, great. Your friend Sarah is the first to register for the event. Add her name to registration list using the append method. Print the contents um, of the collection. So how do we do that? How do we add a string, in this case, um, Sarah, to our array? Well, very simple. We call up the array. Um, well, first we have to like use the name of the array, in which case it's registration list, right? And we're going to use the append method. Um, so it's dot append, okay? And it says new element string. So what do we do here? We actually just literally put um, the string that we're adding. In this case, it's Sarah. Well, there we go. So that's all we have to do. Registration list, which is the name of our uh, array, dot append Sarah. So we're adding Sarah. Now, if we go ahead and print the uh, items, um, the, um, the contents of registration list, uh, it should print Sarah. Well, there's only one. There's only one um, uh, one uh, item, uh, one element in the um, in the array right now, Sarah. So let's go ahead and continue this and see what they're asking us to do. Add four additional names into the array using the plus equal operator. Um, all of the names should be added in one step. Print the contents of the collection. So you could go ahead and add another four names or another hundred names uh, and you could do that uh, one at a time using this method but if you want to add them all in one list uh, using one line you would use this so registration so this is um, another way of doing it so again you call it up by uh, putting the name of the um, array registration list in our case okay and then you do the, pl uh, the plus equal right and we do the hard uh, uh, we do the hard uh, bracket, the uh, square braces, that's what they're called. And then we're going to add four more names. So we're going to say, um, let's say here, John, um, Alex, Anna, whoop, Anna and uh, Jennifer. Okay, cool. So we've added four more um, elements to the array. Great. And this is print the contents of the collection. So how do you do this? Same thing. Print and registration list. Pretty easy stuff. So if we if we look at this, um, it tells us the content of registration list is Sarah, John, Alex, Anna, and Jennifer right here at the bottom. Um, Sarah is still obviously included in the array. We've just added another four. So now the array has five elements. Okay. Use the uh, insert at method to add Charlie into the array as the second element. Print the contents of the collection. Okay, so that's pretty easy to do. I do want to mention something here. So we do have four, uh, we have five elements here, but arrays, collections are, are zero indexed. What does that mean? That means Sarah is actually not number one. She's number zero. John is one, Alex is two, Anna is three, Jennifer is four. Arrays are zero indexed. So if we were to add Charlie at number two, zero, one, two would be the third element. 
um, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, how do we do that? Again, very easy. You put in the name of the array, in this case, registration list. And um, all you have to do is dot insert. So it, it tells us the use the insert method. Again, these are all different, uh, different ways of doing it. But here they're actually asking us to use the insert method. So it's dot insert, open parentheses. Um, and it fills it in, actually. Um, so here we put a string. So obviously the string is Charlie. And at... We have to put an integer here, it's two. Okay, so if we go ahead and print registration list, okay, we'll see the following. Just give it a second, it's running, and we'll see Sarah, John, Charlie. Charlie is added at number two. Now, like I said before, Charlie's third for us, that's because it's zero index. So this is actually position zero, not one. This is position one. And Charlie is position two, and now we have six elements. Great. Someone had a conflict and decided to transfer her registration to someone else. Use array uh, subscripting to change the sixth element to Rebecca. Print the contents of the collection. So the sixth element in our case is Jennifer. We're going to change that to Rebecca. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Well, how do we do that? Pretty easy. So we're going to say, it's actually, there's a few ways of doing it, but it tells us how to do it. Use subscripting. So how do we do that? Very easy. Registration list, again, the name of the um, um, array. Use the square brackets, right? Um, now, I put five in here because it tells us change the sixth element. Why don't I put a six? Well, again, five would be the sixth element because we start at zero. So zero, one two, three, four, five. Five is actually the sixth element. And we simply give it a new value. In our case, it's Rebecca, right? Boom. And that should do it. Now, if I go ahead and print um, registration list, we will see the change in a second. Just give a second, it's running. You'll see that uh, Jennifer has been replaced with Rebecca. Perfect. Okay, so call remove last on my array. If done correctly, this should remove Rebecca from the collection. Store the, store the, store re, store the result of remove last into the new constant called deleted item, then print deleted item. So here we're going to use this method called remove last, and um, essentially it'll, um, it'll remove the last element of an array, and we're going to store it in this constant that we'll just create right now called deleted item. So let's see how that works. So first of all, we're going to have to create a concept called deleted item, and it will store the very last element that we're just going to remove right now. Well, how do we do that? Again, registration list dot remove last. It's, oh, sorry, dot remove last. It's as simple as that. Um, now, if I go ahead and print a deleted item, you will see that it should be called um, Rebecca. There we go, Rebecca, because I've actually removed the last item. If I go ahead and print registration list, uh, you'll see that Rebecca no longer is in the array, right? So it's Sarah, John, Charlie, Alex, Anna. Rebecca has been removed. Perfect, all right, let's move on to the next page. Okay, so let's have a look here. Um, your fitness tracking app shows users a list of possible challenges, grouped by activity type, walking challenges, running challenges, so on and so forth. Using arrays of type string, create at least two lists, one for walking challenges and one for running challenges. Each should have at least two challenges and should be initialized using an, uh, an array literal. Feel free to create more lists for different activities. Let's go ahead and do that. Well, how do we do that? Okay, so it's pretty simple. The first we're gonna use, um, I guess, a walking challenge, right? So var walking challenge, okay? And we're gonna use um, um, string literal to tell it that it's an array of type string, great. And we will assign it um, 
um, I don't know, a few strings. Uh, we'll assign it a few strings. Um, the first challenge may be walk one kilo. And maybe the second challenge is walk five kilo. Probably want to say kilometer, but you guys get it. And the th third challenge maybe is walk 10 kilo. That's a lot. Okay, so 10 kilometers, um, 3 kilometers, and 5 kilometers. The second one is the uh, running challenge. Oh. And of course, it's of type string as well. And we're going to say um, run 10 kilo, not being very... Um, um, not being very uh, innovative here. Uh, running challenges, running challenges. Okay, run three times per week. Run five times per week. And lastly is run, run seven times per week just making this up okay so these are the challenges okay great that's pretty much all it's asking me to do okay um, in your app in your app you want to show all all of these lists on the screen grouped in into sections create a um, create a challenges array that holds each of the lists you have created it will be an array of arrays using challenges print the first element of the second challenge list okay so that's a mouthful Let's do that. So we're going to have to create an array that holds an array. <laughs> so the array is called challenges, right? Create a, a, a challenges array. And this challenges array will hold other arrays. So how do you do that? Well, in a regular array, you would put the square bracket and you would type your elements uh, just like that, for example, right? Another element and a third element and a fourth element and a fifth element. Instead of doing that, we're actually going to put the name of the arrays. So the first one is called walking challenge. And the second array is called running challenge. So this array called challenges holds a walking challenge array and a running challenge array. Fantastic. Um, so we've done that. Um, now it says, so that's the first part. The second part says using challenges, print the first element in the second challenge list. So the first element, well, this is the second challenge, and this is the first element, run three times per week. Well, how do you do that? Okay, it's pretty simple. So we use the print keyword, obviously, to print. But what are we printing here? Well, you're printing something in the challenges um, array, obviously. But if we were to put just one right here, what would it print? Well, it would print, you'll see, it'll print the whole array. It'll print the whole walking array because this is the first element. We don't want to do that. We want to print the first of the second. So what we actually do is we, um, um, well, number one is actually the second, right? Because it's zero index. So we're going to print the second array, which is a running challenge, but we're going to print the first element of that which obviously first is zero here because zero index. So what to read this is you, we're, we're, um, the way you read this is we're printing the first element of the second element. So we're printing the first element of the second array. Um, so the first element of the second element of challenges. Well, the second element of challenges is running challenge. The first element of that is run three times per week. And surely enough, it prints just that. Cool? Awesome. Okay, uh, let's move on. All of the challenges will reset at the end of the month. Use the remove all to remove everything from challenges. Print challenges. Okay, that's pretty easy. So to remove everything, you just use the remove all function. So it's uh, challenges dot remove all. Well, remove all. That's it. And now if we print challenges, it should be an empty array. There we go. It's an empty array. Nothing's inside. Pretty easy. 
Okay, moving on. Um, create a new array of type string that will represent challenges uh, that will represent challenges a user has committed to instead of available challenges. It can be an empty array or have a few items in it. Okay, well that's pretty easy to create an empty array um, of type string is um, var. Uh, what are we going to call this? We're going to call this uh, committed. Um, it's committed challenges, I guess. Var committed two t's committed challenges and it's of type string and right now we're going to initialize it to have absolutely nothing so it's an empty array okay great um, here it says write an if statement that will use is empty to check if there is anything in the array if there is not print a statement asking the user to commit to a challenge add an else if statement that will print the challenge you have chosen um, any challenge I guess uh, if the array count is exactly one then add an else if statement that will print you have chosen multiple challenges okay so let's do this um, that was a mouthful so let's break it down the first thing is we're going to create an if statement that uses the is empty um, the is empty property um, within arrays so if committed oh, committed challenges dot is empty right so we're saying if this array is empty do the following okay so what are we going to do here we're going to print print um go do some challenges i guess um if it's empty okay right however I'm gonna go ahead and do this um, else if right so um, if it's not empty if it's um, if committed challenges has um, let's say one um, so the dot count essentially tells you the count of elements within an array I'm saying if there's one um, then do the following um, I don't know the I don't know what to do here print uh, let's see here you have chosen a great challenge I guess right I'm gonna say else um, which would obviously mean they've chosen more than one challenge because if, if they haven't chosen any challenges it's empty and I, I'm gonna say go do some challenges if they've chosen one challenge I said you've chosen a great challenge else which means they've chosen more than one challenge um, I'm gonna say take it easy maybe you should complete one challenge at a time something along those lines I'm just being creative here um, and that's essentially it now what actually prints what executes it's go do some challenges why because um, committed challenges is empty right now so it is empty so this actually executes this line doesn't execute and neither does this okay cool 